If the past me knew the five things the present me does about environmental antagonism, I would have shined in this short story duel I took part in. I entered this contest with complete confidence I could handle anything thrown at me. The prompt I got was to write nature as the antagonist. <sighs> yeah, this is going to be fun to remember. If this is your first video with me, I'm Marcus Reed, an author who wishes to explore, understand, and master the art of storytelling. To accomplish this, I assess stories, creators, and the craft one video at a time. If you wish to improve with me, subscribe to the channel. Alright, back to my humiliation. At first, I thought of some simple survival stuff would work. It didn't. It was boring. I struggled with trying to figure out how to make the story engaging. What I came up with was a high during a storm and the job getting interrupted by a bear. The protagonist ended up fighting a bear and just... I could have made a far more compelling story if I knew this. Environmental antagonists aren't meant to be beaten. I learned this from reading the One Hour Guide to Better Antagonists. When the antagonist is the setting, it tests one's ability to endure, survive, or escape. This is the first thing to keep in mind, to not screw up like me. I had one idea like this, which was kind of inspired by a Full Metal Alchemist, but it was boring. Though part of why it was is because of the second thing I failed to realize. You shouldn't let the setting do the heavy lifting when writing this sort of antagonism. The Dragon Prince doesn't, despite having all sorts of environmental antagonists. For those who don't know, The Dragon Prince is a fantasy adventure which focuses on two princes and an elf assassin who seek to avert a war by returning a stolen dragon egg. While there's people pursuing them, there's plenty of environmental antagonism throughout, given the story's plot use of the road trip structure. When there isn't someone else to face in an environment, the scene focuses on internal and interpersonal conflicts. This brings us to the episode I analyzed using these two tips and three others, which I'll share throughout the video. This episode focuses on the interpersonal conflict between Calum, one of the princes, and Rayla, the elf assassin. The first act sets up Calum's suspicions that Rayla is hiding something from him and his brother Ezrin, and thus can't be trusted. Rayla, meanwhile, fears telling them about the hit squad she came with that killed the prince's father. Nevertheless, she resents them for not trusting her. Matters for her worsen when someone tracking them attacks her. The two have a skirmish, and the guy she's fighting realizes she hasn't informed them about the princess's father being dead. She manages to win, despite her inability to use one of her hands, and this guy is a problem since he can expose her. She rushes the princess away, and sets on doing anything she can to make following them harder. Thus, she decides that they should head up through a mountain. Callum questions this, given how dangerous this is, but they concede. This brings us to the third tip that protagonists facing environmental antagonists are a fish out of water. It's the same logic as being an underdog. The lack of familiarity creates greater struggle. Also, for a bonus to this tip, it's better when those facing environmental antagonism end up doing so because of their choices. So the Dragon Prince was doing some great writing here, tiny things which can easily go unnoticed. The next time we check in on them, things are growing difficult as the princes no longer have food. The whole being rushed earlier didn't help. Rayla offers her food, but it's drunk by bait, Ezrin's pet. I'm sure you can guess how she feels. As they keep climbing, Ezrin tires from carrying the massive egg. Still, the princess refuses to give it to Rayla, who insists they do. Again, the environment is providing a challenge, but it isn't what's emphasized. The narrative focuses on the distrust between the two sides, while the mountain simply puts them in situations which forces this to the surface. Caleb and Rayla start arguing loudly because of the trust issues, which the environment responds to with cracking eyes. If they keep yelling, there's going to be an avalanche, which weaves well into tip 4. An environmental antagonist should have strict rules. Why? They lack intent. They can't deliberately counter the protagonist's actions or even care about them. Thus, a storyteller must be ruthless in its enforcement of the environment's rules, its cause and effect. In this case, the mountain makes clear that if they're loud, it'll crack and create an avalanche. To their credit, they try to be quiet after Esmond informs them. Unfortunately, bait belches from the stolen berries. The interpersonal aspects remain center as they attempt to survive the avalanche. Caleb tries to defend them with some wind magic, but they are knocked off the mountain by the avalanche. They survive the fall, only to find themselves on a frozen lake. Esmond tries to recover the egg, but the ice cracks beneath him. Thus. Caleb and Rayla must cooperate to rescue Ezrin and the egg. They have no other choice but to trust one another. This brings us to the fifth tip. The environmental antagonist makes it difficult for a character to maintain their viewpoint. They must learn how to navigate the environment. In this case, they had to learn to trust. Without trust, they can't survive or escape. 
Ezrin's trust forces Rayla to confront her secrecy and tell them her oath to kill Ezrin, an oath she decides to forgo. She does try to tell them about their father, but the ice cracking beneath Caelan prompts him to force the egg into her hand. She drops it due to her hand issues, the ice cracks when it hits, and the egg goes under. Acting quick, Ezrin dives into the icy water. Caelan tries to follow, but Rayla stops him, citing the episode's lesson. Trust. Caelan must trust Ezrin to rescue it. Since if Caleb doesn't, they'll both be in the ice water with no way out. Caleb chooses to trust her judgment and, after some suspense, she's proven right. Together, they save Ezrin and the egg. The egg isn't in the best of shape, a scar from their lack of trust, but fixing that is a struggle for a different episode. The important takeaway here is how the mountain did its job as an environmental antagonist. To review, 1. It isn't meant to be beaten, it is to be survived, endured, and escaped from. 2. It didn't do the heavy lifting for the conflict. 3. It forced them to confront something they are unfamiliar and unprepared for. 4. It enforced its rules ruthlessly. And 5. It forced the characters to change to survive. For me as a writer, I'm positive this will play into a heist somehow, what with me being a caper slash mystery writer first and foremost. As for how past me could have used this, I'd probably make a treasure hunting story. Actually, that gets me thinking. I did have an idea for a Grandmaster of Theft short story called The Treacherous Treasure. The client's loved one is meant to die in the wilderness while trying to find a treasure a rich guy supposedly hid. I could easily build a tragedy around this using these tips. Maybe. I'm onto something here, maybe, I think. I'm gonna go do some brainstorming. You should try brainstorming too. Think up some ideas how you could use this and post it in the comments. Also, if you have examples you've seen in other works to offer up, I'd love to hear about them. Let's start a conversation, since I'm always on the lookout for people to chat about stories and storytelling with.